Merry Christmas everybody, it's uh, Edmund M0MNG here with a video about my Yaesu FT450 which earlier this week for a few moments I thought had developed a transmit fault but uh, in the end I found the solution so I thought I would do a video just in case anybody else has had a similar problem and are thinking oh no I've got to send it off for repair or I've got to dive in with a soldering iron hopefully this video might help you a little bit this is the original FT450 um, it arrived here on Christmas Day 2010 I bought half of it, my dad bought the other half and unfortunately he didn't live long enough to see Christmas 2011 so, although it's silly, I suppose, to say that a, a box of electronics has sentimental value, uh, this does. And if it had turned out that there was some terrible fault on transmit that could never be fixed, I would still keep it as a receiver, and for sentimental reasons. But, uh, fortunately, this particular one, the solution was um, reasonably straightforward. So, it's the original 450 it's not the the more recent 450 AT or 450 D with the automatic uh, antenna matching unit built in although I'd imagine there's a reasonably good chance that uh, what I'm going to show you here will apply equally to the the more recent models of the 450 and probably to other Yaesu rigs as well because the thing that I thought was actually a fault is a pretty neat and sensible safety feature as it were so what I'll do I'll turn the um, 450 on it's on the 40 meter band which is the the band that I, I basically live on pretty much if I'm going to go on HF um, there is a nicely resonant half wave inverted V dipole uh, connected to it so no antenna matching unit is necessary I'll turn it on and um, there's a bit more noise today than there would be normally. I've got S9 of noise there, but that's only because very close to where the rig is that you can't see. I'm uh, using quite a lot of other electrical equipment, a battery charger and a switch mode power supply. So there's S9 of noise on there at the moment, but normally it's uh, on 40 metres, it's about S5, S6 worth of noise. So as you might be able to see, I'll move the camera I've turned it on, that's all I've done, I haven't pressed anything else apart from adjusting the volume. Down here, there's a little icon that's flashing. It depicts an antenna immediately underneath the word ANT, A-N-T, and it's flashing. But as soon as I do anything, spin the VFO, I'll just move it fractionally like that and the reason it went into transmit then was I accidentally hit, hit uh, one of the buttons on the desk microphone with my elbow but as soon as I move this or move that the icon stops flashing and you can transmit I have this key set up to transmit a low power carrier the IC very low SWR and basically it works as it should so far so good I did mention incidentally that I um, knocked the desk microphone I have here this is the uh, Yaesu MD100 not the very latest one but uh, I think the penultimate desk mic that, that uh, Yaesu brought out and there are a couple of ways you can key it you can press the PTT button here and keep it held down all the time you're talking and then let go when you're finished if you don't want to hold it down the whole time there's a lock button here so you press that once and then it's as if you were pressing and holding this the whole time and that leaves your hands free to uh, to write your contacts in there for example or on your computer if you're more high tech and then when you've finished press it again to release now when I'm on the air using this these two are the only buttons that I use um, there's no particular reason why that's just the way I've always done it but there's another button here where you can change frequency and 
of significance to this video, on the top of the microphone there is another lock button and that performs the same function as that. So you've got two of them. I have never used that. Bear that in mind. So one day, a few days ago, I came to switch my Yaesu on and it did this. Now the uh, TX icon is flashing here and this is flashing too which it always does as uh, when I turn it on and you can see I've moved the VFO and it has now stopped flashing but the TX icon here is still flashing and it doesn't matter what I do or what I did I can use the VFO but if I try to transmit by pressing that for a carrier nothing happens I'll turn the noise up so you can hear whatever I do I can't transmit and my heart sank a bit at that because I mentioned this rig has sentimental value to me uh, for that reason alone I wouldn't attempt to repair I would have it prepared, repaired rather professionally but I know that if you send rigs off to be repaired they can come back slightly damaged or you know you can have one problem fixed and then another one comes along for example um, elsewhere on YouTube Del Boy uh, who specializes in CB radios bought a brand new president uh, something or other in 2015 sent it back to be repaired because it had uh, a fault under warranty and when it came back to him okay the fault that uh, he'd sent it off to be repaired that had been repaired 100% no problem but the um, screen on the front of the radio uh, was blemished, whereas before it had been perfect. So I was a bit wary about sending, sending this lovely little thing, uh, which reminds me of my dad, um, off somewhere to buy a courier, for example, to get repaired, just in case um, it ended up being uh, damaged in transit. So I was sitting there thinking, what shall I do? I thought, well, if it's not repairable... Um, I'll keep it as a receiver because it's a good receiver if nothing else and I'll keep it in memory of my dad I could never see me getting rid of it but um, I thought well it shouldn't have failed really because I never sort of thrash it I don't transmit with high SWR regularly I run it almost always at far less than the 100 watts it's rated for typically on 40 meters I run it at 20 watts on SSB if somebody if I can hear somebody uh, using my inverted V antenna at more than about signal strength 6, then what I've found is that irrespective of how much power they're using or what antenna they're using, if I use 20 watts into my inverted V, then they will hear me more or less at the same signal strength that I hear them. So it's rarely necessary to run any more. So I've not been you know, thrashing the output stages by running it at 100 watts full pelt and as I say I've always used resonant antennas or an antenna matching unit I've never transmitted you know for long with a, a very high SWR so I thought well I haven't done anything to it I haven't dropped it on the floor or you know spilt beer on it or anything either so there's no reason really why it any bit of it should have failed and I was sitting there thinking about it and my eye dropped onto the MD100 and I suddenly realized that this button here that I never use was depressed like I've done it now I must have accidentally picked the microphone up and with my finger or picked it up sort of holding it there somehow accidentally hit that button so it was in transmit so now you will see you've got the TX light flashing there still if I 
do that, the TX light goes out. And now I can transmit. Problem solved. No expensive repair needed. Um, as I say, I've not tested this on other Yaesu radios, but I would not be at all surprised if um, if this is implemented uh, in all the radios that Yaesu makes these days. And it's a really sensible precaution to have, because if that wasn't there and you switch the radio on with um, a mismatched antenna, or worse still, no antenna connected, there is going to be a serious amount of power appearing the SO239 socket here at the back of the radio and um, your uh, your output transistors I don't think they'd like it up them um, probably wouldn't last very long <laughs> so it's actually a really neat safety feature which I never knew existed but uh, boy was I pleased when I was sitting there and my eye dropped on the mythical button on the top that I never ever use so I hope this video is helpful, particularly if you're you know, looking at a Yesu right now that's doing something similar and thinking to, my, thinking to yourself, oh good lord I've got an expensive uh, repair job on my hands here. It could be as simple a solution as that. So I hope this video will have helped somebody. Have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, if you are on amateur radio, I uh, hope to work you on 40 metres probably SSB, maybe CW, maybe the higher bands if they're open and um, if you're anywhere vaguely near uh, West Sussex I have bought myself a, a little Christmas present which is a crossed five element Yagi for two metres which I'm going to put together later this afternoon hopefully so uh, if you're anywhere near West Sussex maybe work you through that and I also got a 20 element 70 centimetre beam at the the Kempton Rally for £10. 50p per element. Can't be bad. So hopefully I'm going to put that together and uh, sort it out anytime soon. So um, I hope this video has helped and uh, may I wish you... It's a bit late to say Merry Christmas now, isn't it? Because it's the 28th of December I'm recording this. So may I wish you a very happy new year and uh, whichever bands you like on the radio from DC to light, get on there, make some activity and I hope to see hear you on the, uh, the airwaves at some point very, very soon. Have fun and uh, bye for now.